Baldur's Gate 3 is a very long game. In fact, if you Google how long it takes the average person to complete it, you'll get answers ranging from 60 to 100 hours. But speedrunners have managed to beat the game's hardest difficulty, Honor Mode, in just around 20 minutes using a variety of glitches and skips. And so it begs the question, how fast can you beat Honor Mode without glitches? Is it fast enough to get a Steam refund? Do you need to get lucky? Well, I've been attempting to answer this question for the past three weeks, and spoiler alert, the answer is yes, you can get a refund, and no, you do not need to get lucky. In fact, by the end of this video, you should be able to get your own golden dice for completing honor mode in a single evening with an over 99% success rate. And before you ask, yes, this works on console. Real quickly before we get into the run, I just want to say that if you ever get stuck, the description below has 1. a fully commentated mod of this run, 2. a fully written text guide of exactly what to do, 3. my discord where you can personally ask me any questions about the route, and 4. the Baldur's Gate speedrun discord where you can share your times and offer suggestions. And just as one final thing, Baldur's Gate is way, way, way too large to exactly define what a glitch is, so for the purposes of this video, I'll be loosely defining it as anything you couldn't sweet talk a real DM to do in Dungeons & Dragons. We can skip certain triggers and derail the story using creative workarounds just as players would in real life, and there's gonna be plenty of it, so go ahead and get your angry comments ready. But without further ado, let's get into the run. To start, we'll be playing as the Dark Urge Origin. This will let us skip Orin's entire questline and go straight into a duel with her later on. For our race, we'll be playing a Drow, as that'll give us free passage into the Goblin Camp and through the Underdark in Act 1. Unlike most speedruns, we'll actually be playing a Storm Sorcerer. This is for a specific reason we'll get into much later on in the video, but it's also just because spellcasters in this game are broken, and Enhanced Leap and Featherfall will let us zoom around the map like the Hulk. Storm Sorcerer's natural fly ability is a pretty good bonus too. The only cantrip we specifically need is my Minor Illusion, but on screen are my recommendations for the other three you should get. As for our stat distribution, we'll be pumping our strength up to 17, our dexterity to 16, and our charisma to 15. The Nautiloid is pretty self-explanatory, just go through as you normally would, except make sure to have Lazelle jump off the map to her death. We can't let Githyanki have nice things. You can also set up a pretty cool triple dash before the transponder room if you want to get to the transponder in one turn. Just enhance leap, dash, enter turn based mode, dash again, then walk through the door. Upon combat, dash a third time and run and jump all the way to the transponder. This can be pretty tight, but you should be able to get it pretty consistently. Once we're in Act 1, you'll notice that Lazel's Soul Echo is actually on the beach with us. We don't need to recruit her or anything, but her armor is super valuable and she has an extra scroll of rev. rev, 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 rev Revive, rev, rev, revivify. Anyways, we then go to recruit Gale, which funnily enough is probably one of the most random things throughout the run, and then we'll put this Mind Flayer out of his misery. This Mind Flayer has a chance to drop a Speed Potion. If he doesn't, don't worry though, there's plenty of Mind Flayers scattered around the beach that can also drop one, and they're not mandatory for the run. Fun fact, you can actually completely skip the Grove Encounter if you have high enough jump height to scale the side of this mountain. Less combat for us. Our next stop will be in the Blinded Village. We just leap around the side to avoid all the goblins and go into the Windmill Basement, where we'll find the Speedy Light Feet Boots, which give us a plus one to athletics and will be a major game changer in Act 3. For now though, we can continue down into the Goblin Camp and recruit Best Girl Shadowheart. Also, this is probably the only speedrun category where we won't do something absolutely horrific to her, so Shadowheart lovers can finally, finally get a break. We ungroup her and send her to the Mountain Pass door, which I do through this weird lineup, but you can just walk around down there, and then we continue to make our way into the Goblin Camp, which will let us in with open arms since we're playing a drow. We talk to Guts and have her brand us, and she's so impressed by her natural charm that she invites us into her private quarters. She has tiny legs and she takes a while to get back there though, so in the meantime we're gonna steal the smoke powder barrels behind Raxlin and in the room next to her quarters. Send those down onto camp and minor illusion her to the edge of this chasm. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Grab the key she dropped on the ground and make your way through this locked door. Sneak on past the guard and steal the Amulet of Misty Set from this chest. This amulet is seriously broken in the early game, and if you didn't know about it, I highly recommend you start using it. We'll then head on down to this puzzle, which is always random, but has a pretty easy solution. Just move the black dots down to the bottom circle. This opens a secret passageway to the Underdark, which is host to all kinds of powerful items and strong enemies. We will be stopping by exactly zero of them though, instead opting to jump straight on down to this boat. After stealing it and sailing off into the darkness, some Dwergar will meet us on the water and ask what we're doing. Luckily, that brand we got earlier from Guts is proof enough that we're on their side, and they let us come with them to the Grimforge. 
Here we see a couple Dwergar disposing of some dead gnome bodies. We use Minor Illusion to distract them and then steal a ring off of this dead body, which has the ability to grant us invisibility, which is so broken. I, invisibility is so busted in this game, we're gonna use it so much. While we're here, we can actually jump over to this corner and use our Storm Sorcerer Fly ability to fly straight over the wall into a secret area where we can find the most powerful explosive in the game, the Rune Powder Barrel. We can use our new invisibility ring to sneak on past and grab the barrel before the gnome guarding it can even notice, then instantly teleport to a waypoint so she can't steal it back from us. We can then switch back to Shadowheart and finally go through that mountain pass door and head on down to Act 2. Before we go through the mountain pass, we'll need to level up exactly one time. Here's the TLDR, which I'll be doing for every level up from now on, but the important thing is we get Fog Cloud. The mountain pass is pretty simple, we just jump over to this group of enemies and fog cloud the center of the encounter, which will let us jump in and out without detection. Make sure you're paying attention to this big zombie lord that patrols the area though, if you jump out of the fog cloud at the wrong time, he'll see you. In order to traverse the next area of the game, the Shadow Curse lands, we'll need to gain access to a moon lantern to alleviate the effects of the curse. Luckily, there's an ambush party waiting below that has one, and we can use our Alitha check to have them bring their leader right to us. Shadowheart has access to the command spell, so we'll just command him to give it to us until we get it. Which, for whatever reason, is perfectly fine with everyone around, even if we fail. I, I really... Th this should not be in the game. We then release the pixie that's trapped inside the lantern, and she'll give everyone in our party a blessing that will allow us to walk around the area freely. With that done, we can then send Gale on down to Last Light Inn, which, again, I do through a weird lineup, but you can walk there yourself. While he's going on down there, we're going to go straight to Moonrise Towers, where we'll find Minthara being berated by Kethric, who will sentence her to death, but not before torture. Minthara is level 6, which is 4 levels higher than us, so saving her would be really, really good for us. We can actually do this pretty easily and without combat using a creative workaround with Minor Illusion and Fog Cloud. We first Minor Illusion, one Torturer, out of the room, then Fog Cloud between Minthara and the second Torturer. Now, all three of the NPCs are too far apart from each other to trigger the cutscene, and nobody has line of sight of Minthara, so we can just invite her to our party, and then cast invisibility on her before anybody notices, and walk straight out of Moonrise Towers. Just make sure no scrying eyes are around, as they have seen visibility, and the area will become hostile if they spot you. Next, we need to deal with the Night Song, so we'll sneak on down to the Temple of Shar, jumping right over Raphael's head so he doesn't see us and waste a bunch of our time. Usually there's a bunch of puzzles before you actually get into the temple, but I've beaten this game probably a hundred times, so I know all the solutions already. To get down to the Night Song, we have to solve a bunch more puzzles, do four trials to get four gems, to ride an elevator down to this door, and then unlock it. Okay, that shit takes forever. We're just gonna use this broken staircase to fly straight down to the door, where we'll level up and get Knock, which lets us open it right up. Um, why is this in the game? Before we head down to Shadowfell, though, we need to do some shopping back at Last Light Inn. This rustic chest above the Oxpen actually goes for quite a bit of gold, so go ahead and grab that, then strike up a conversation with the Merchant Tali. She'll take the chest and that stinky Githyanki armor right off our hands for a good lump of gold, which we'll use to buy smoke powder bombs from her. For those of you who don't know already, leveling up will reset the shops, so we can just use the remaining level ups we have to re-roll her shop, which is basically guaranteed to give us a good amount of bombs. Just make sure you keep at least 100 gold left over. Technically, if you want the next part of this run to be 100% guaranteed, you need to get 9 bombs, but realistically you'll have enough firepower regardless, so don't fret if you can't quite get there. Before we continue to Shadowfell, make sure to remove any valuables from Shadowheart's inventory, because we're really about to piss her off. Send everyone back to camp, and then you can head on down to Nightsong. Now, normally we'd free Nightsong, because she's a massive help in fighting Kethric, the major boss for this area. But for this run, we can actually just give her away to Balthazar, because we're going to do something very creative to bypass Kethric's entire first phase. We head on up to the rooftop of Moonrise Towers by climbing up the side and using Misty Step on this sightline. Kethric will thank us and tell us to interact with the altar. But before we do that, we have some business to attend to back at camp. We will re-recruit Gale, who informs us he has a condition that requires us to give him magical items to consume. We can just tell him we need them for now and he can have them later, and he'll be content for the time being. We respec him into an identical Storm Sorcerer to our own character, then grab all the barrels from the camp chest. Before we leave, we kill Minthara without recruiting her, and pick her up into our inventory. Then we exit camp and cast Twinned Invisibility on both Gale and ourself and interact with the altar. Kethric finds out we have possession of the artifact he wants, and has Balthazar put us into Silence Pots. Luckily, as sorcerers, we have access to the subtle spell Metamagic, which will allow us to cast spells when silenced. Since our invisibility hasn't worn off yet, we can just crouch and cast Subtle Misty Step to escape the silence pods without anyone noticing. 
then recast Twin Invisibility and skip right on out of the encounter. Now, you might have wondered why I killed Minthara without recruiting her. Since she wasn't part of our party, she didn't get put into her own silence pod, which, as a paladin, she would have had no way of escaping without combat. Luckily, we can just revive her now that we're through the encounter, and she'll happily join us. We then send Gale down to the Kethric encounter alone. This is where the run starts to get a little crazy, so bear with me for a second. Now, Kethric is an insanely hard enemy to kill when under level, but before I show you how we defeat him with just a level 4 Gale, let me explain to you all the ways that you can do damage without a dice roll in Baldur's Gate 3. One, the simplest, and the one that most of you will probably know, Magic Missile. It always connects, but is mostly based on small chip damage, and since Kethric wears an armor piece that does minus 2 to all incoming damage sources, it basically does nothing to him. Two, also pretty self-explanatory, Gravity. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, and as much as I enjoy becoming an owlbear and jumping from a stack of boxes higher than the skybox, I don't think my DM would let me get away with that, so we're gonna try something else. 3. Explosions. Obviously we'll be using some of these, I wouldn't have had you collect them if we didn't, but the issue is we aren't going to live to tell the tale, and after Ketherick dies, the avatar of Merkel spawns, which is the real boss of this encounter. And finally, environmental effects. Fire on the ground, electrified water, caustic brine, and best of all, Gale's necrotic aura when you fail to give him any magical artifacts to consume. All of these will always do at least 1d4 of damage per turn if an enemy is standing on them and Merkel can't move. I think you see where this is going. We have Gale cast Enhanced Leap and Invisibility, and then Free Night Song. Jump on over to Ketherick, make the most beautiful sculpture you've ever seen, and blow it up. Ketherick dies, and Gale's said body is flung right next to Merkel's spawn point, where the Necrotic Aura combined with the fire left over on the ground will tick down at his health for the next 25 minutes. That's speedrun strats, baby. Before you attempt this on your own, I recommend reading the text guide linked below, because the physics of this can be kind of wonky and it's easy to mess it up either by not having the fire actually do damage or flinging Gale's body too far away from Merkel's spawn point. So if the boss is going to die in 25 minutes, why did I go through all the trouble of bringing Minthara down here? Well, we can actually do a cool little build on her using her remaining levels to get a pretty good shot at doing an additional 144 damage to Merkel. Put two of her levels into Tempest Cleric, and the other three into Storm Sorcerer, making sure to get Create Water, Quicken Spell Meta Magic, and Witch Bolt. Then get your hands on a Tadpole, either by grabbing one in this room, or using the one you got from Ketherick earlier if you still have it. Sometimes the game just removes it, I don't- I, I'm not entirely sure why. But make sure she gets the luck of the Far Realm's Lithid ability. Once Merkle's HP is starting to get around that 144 mark, you can walk into the fight and pray that you live long enough to get off the combo of Quickened Create Water and Witch Bolt. Just make sure you don't accidentally put out your fire. Honestly, I wouldn't try this. I'm only putting it in the video because it's cool and it can make this a couple minutes faster if you're impatient. So for most of you, probably just disregard this entire thing with Minthara and instead recruit her and send her back to camp earlier when we killed her. Bonus points if you really, really want to speed things up. Save the room powder barrel and instead gamble on the explosives killing Ketherick anyways. Then use Mage Hand Attack to bring the barrel down to 1 HP and use that speed potion I talked about earlier to both get off the Witch Bolt combo and throw the barrel from high ground. This can do up to 388 damage alone, one-shotting Merkel, but it's obviously super random and will only happen every 50 attempts or so. Good luck to anyone actually insane enough to speedrun this category. With Ketherick out of the way, we can grab his netherstone and pick up Gale's dead body before heading on up to the little celebration above, where Jahira, a level 8 druid, will be waiting for us. We recruit her, then talk to Wolbrin Bongol. He gives us gold for some reason? I, I, I don't know. But then we can head back over to Tali, where we're gonna trade just about everything we have so that we can buy the mighty cloth armor she sells. Just make sure to keep the invisibility ring and the speedy light feet boots, and if you can't do the trade without having at least 200 gold left over, either don't worry about it or go loot something for extra gold. We then long rest and respec both Minthara and Jahira into identical champion fighters with as much strength as possible, making sure to get the athlete ability and ability improvement on strength, which should put us up to 20 and give us additional proficiency in athletics. Jahira will also be able to get alert, which will help us soon. We equip all the items we have left over onto Jahira and continue into Act 3, where we will have an intermission where we're ambushed by a bunch of Githyanki in the Astral Plane. Anyways, we can just leap right over their heads into the portal and then sneak around the bulk of the encounter until we are joined by the Emperor. This fight is usually pretty tough, there are four Githyanki monks who will absolutely destroy us if we give them even a single turn. Luckily, with all the strength Minthara and Jahira have, they can just kind of throw all four of them off the map in a single turn. 
completely trivializing this fight. The Emperor will then trauma dump on our entire party, so we shut him up and skip through everything and continue on to Act 3. Now that we're in Rivington, we're actually just gonna skip straight through as we can just side with Gortash later and get his stone non-violently, so all we need to do for now is use Jahira's insane jump height to collect the castle's waypoint and move on to the lower city. The only fights remaining at this point are going to be Orin and the Netherbrain, and as I mentioned earlier, being the Dark Urge origin allows us to go straight into the fight with Orin. So if we're going to do any item collecting, we need to do it now. We make a pit stop at Philogir's Firework Shop, where we can cast Darkness in this corner and steal a bunch of fireworks, which are great light explosives to take down the Netherbrain. We're not actually going to need very many, but you should steal as many as you can get your hands on. Orin is actually pretty simple. We can kind of just waltz on down to her temple using the invisibility to sneak past all the encounters, where she'll want to duel us fair and square for her spot as Ball's Chosen. I don't play fair though, so we're just gonna have Jahira sneak up with invisibility, enlarged, guidance, 20 strength, the athlete feat, and armor that gives plus 2 strength and plus 1 athletics, and throw her right off the map. If this fails, you get stuck in the duel cutscene. But she's still in the world as Orin, so you can actually just have Minthara put on all the gear and do the exact same thing from behind for a second chance at the throat. With all these buffs, each one of them should have around a 97% success rate of throwing her off the map, meaning every 1 in 33 runs or so will fail at this point. Luckily, if you've made it this far, you've basically completed the run. All you have to do is pick her nether stone up off the ground, have Jahira and Minthara jump off the map, revive them at Withers, then go talk to Gortash at his coronation. He'll ask for the stones, but don't give them to him. He'll commend our backbone and ask us to meet him at the Morphic Pools. We can then head on over there and use Jahira's max jump height in this very narrow angle on the corner of our screen to jump straight up to the end of the Morphic Pools where we can confront the Netherbrain. Of course this fails as we're unable to yet wield the stones, so our old buddy the Emperor helps us become a Mind Flayer, which comes with the handy ability Fierce Perilous Stakes. This allows us to do an additional 15 psychic damage per attack, and it just so happens every single firework we picked up earlier is considered a separate attack, meaning the Nether Brain is going to go down with just a small handful of these things. Now that we have all the components we need to kill the Nether Brain, the Emperor is actually just going to get in our way, so we attack him and have him leave us. After going through the portal to the high halls, we have all our companions except Jahira jump off the side of the map. At this point, all we need to do is make it up to the brainstem to start the final fight, so we cast invisibility on Jahira and have her jump right through the area carefully avoiding all the enemies with C invisibility. Once she's there, both her and our main character cast invisibility and head into the fight, at which point we can channel the stones on the crown and open a portal to the nether brain. Fly right up to him, drop the fireworks, cast fierce perilous stakes, and then wait one turn to blow them up finishing honor mode just barely below the 2 hour mark. This can be done way, way, way faster. I'm talking like 45 minutes to an hour if someone got really good at it, but this was quite literally the first ever stream of this route and I was able to get it done in just about no time. So those of you who are still daunted by the task of getting your golden dice and don't want to go through all the speedrunner routes should be able to take notes from this and get your own in less than a day's effort. But it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the steam refund. You thought this video was real? You actually, genuinely thought I spent $60 to speedrun a refund? Go back, look at this, look at this video. All of this footage is spliced together. This was just a proof of concept for Glitchless as a route. I'm so sorry. I'm content pilled out of my mind. I, I, I'll, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs>